others. There was no games. There was no prostitution. Where the children can grow up and learn self-worth. That's what my father wanted. So that they, wait, in his words, I tell you, they won't have to be exposed to all this garbage. That's what he called it. Garbage. Because now they say, oh, we're a product of our environment. So he said, we have to change the environment. And how do we do that? Change the environment. We can't change the environment if the people that are supposed to protect the service is just as bad as the people that they're trying to do. They, they, they gangsters. They gangsters. And they got the nerve to call a decent human being, somebody who fed the hungry, who cared about people, they call him something other than he's not. They call him a terrorist. They call him rapper. They call him militant. Yeah, my father spoke that right. He didn't shoot a gun. And this is what they were to take. Because of his raw tongue and what he said, he said, hey, look, the government ain't coming to the people, you're going to have to help the people. So now they're going to say, you want to overthrow the government. This is a lie. He just wanted the government to do what they said they're supposed to do. Care about the people. That's it. Care about the people. But he didn't have enough help. He did not have enough help and privilege and, and convincing others that it's our job. We can't lean and wait for the government to be able to help your brother, help your sister, help the people, help the crackheads. I asked my father one time, I know his brother is Muslim. We all know that his brother smoked crack. I asked my father, I said, why do you keep him around here? I mean, he was the biggest suspect of stealing the microphone in the amplifier. And I was tired. And I heard my father like, we can't keep up the amplifier and amplifiers and steal the But I said to him, why do y'all keep him around here? He said, hey, ooh. Because perchance he may change. We all we got. If we don't help him, maybe this and him happen, this will help him get off the crack. Don't worry about it. I got this. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's pop. I know what I'm doing. And he talk like that, just simply. You don't, know, you don't understand me. Don't worry about it. So the fact that he didn't have a sugary tongue and make it all nice and sweet and simple and sugar coated, and he said, hey, look, we need to make a change. Get over there and make a change. That's how he talk. Do it. Do it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. If you see it, say you see it. Simple as that. And we can't be scared. We got to stand up for truth, for justice. It's, it's not just Muslims. It's not just Muslims. Everybody got to wake up and understand that we're going to have to come together on a common ground. The common ground, I tell you, is one God, one creator. They come together and start learning how to be decent human beings, people that have a heart, they care about the next man. That's Islam. That's why we're here. So join us and stand up for truth. And I'm not a father. Sorry. We thank Father Omar for his comments. And uh, as I stated previously, after we have our three speakers, we then will avail ourselves to any questions, to, but only to this topic. Um, and as a reminder, I thought I heard a cell phone uh, calling me again. Please put your cell phone on vibrate, please. Uh, now I'd like to have um, Karen Michigan's uh, staff attorney, uh, Lena Mosley, uh, speak to you, uh, us in regards to going on. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.